more specifically now, what are you most keen to see implemented from all the promises? And there has been a lot of promises <laughs> the, last, <laughs> the last week. It's just, uh, it's a barrage of promises. So I'm very keen to hear your thoughts on what a few, give me a couple of things that um, really pique your interest and you're excited to see done. Yeah, well, the f the first thing is how nice is it to see a proactive leader? I mean, it's been a week and he's he's outlined, he's been so clear outlining policy. Uh, he's been hard at work talking to foreign leaders from all corners of the world. Um, and on that on that latter note, uh, yes, I think global peace is what I'm quite looking forward to, Nathan. I really think I don't think that's an outrageous comment or prediction. I think Trump and the way he leads um, and his style is very effective in foreign diplomacy, as I've said for weeks. So I do expect um, and and will hold him accountable. Will hold the administration accountable to solving uh, the global tensions and global conflicts that are, that are currently happening. I, and, and I'm a pacifist, so I come from the lens of wanting the wars to be over as quickly as possible, uh, so long as the concessions aren't extreme or severe. Uh, so I expect, I expect peace will once again be achieved in the Middle East, as it was last time he was running the show. I expect uh, the Russia-Ukraine war will come to an abrupt halt, which I think you know, again, so long as the concessions aren't extreme, Ukraine have to concede somewhat. I think that, unfortunately, that's clear. But so long as the concessions aren't extreme, it's a terrific result. And if he does get that done quickly, uh, well, he should win a Nobel Peace Prize. So anyway, so that's that's one thing, Nathan, really looking forward to. And then, look, clearly, clearly it's this free speech movement. Uh, clearly it's, you know, and and small government. Getting rid of the red tape in the government um, to enable you know business to thrive, uh, to enable government to be more effective, and thank goodness he uh, he has both the House and the Senate now, so real action can be achieved. That's a huge thing. Huge. Yeah. Didn't have they didn't have that in twenty even in twenty sixteen, did he? No. No. Exactly. So we can really get things done now. Continue yeah. So so Nathan, that's that's pretty. I mean. Look, there's there's a lot of specific there's a lot of specific um, items regarding economy. Um, you know, we'll get to markets later in the show, so I won't I won't dive too deep on that. But I'm I'm excited for the cultural shift. Yeah, um, cultural shift is a big one for me, and that includes that includes free speech. It includes the ability to engage in a functioning society where people can disagree. So. Um, yeah, I, I think I think culture, um, I think I think it's the train kind of coming back a stop, um, or the pendulum swinging slightly the other way that I'm most looking forward to. But economic prosperity, I think, will happen. I really back Trump's plans. Um, I think peace is achievable, um, and I think in a, like a peace for the for the West is achievable too, um, at the expense of the few that might get left behind. So they're the you know, they're the very high level items that I think um, are really exciting. Yes. What about you, Matt? Well, I, I obviously echo your sentiments. I probably put the just underneath the free speech stuff, more specifically, the clearly outlined plan to dismantle the censorship industrial complex. Yeah. Uh, it was just so thorough on that, that uh, long video I put out last week. Just in injecting the right resources in the right places to ensure that that is dismantled as quick as possible. The looming prospect of a digital bill of rights, massive. I mean, that can't be overstated. Uh, and then the big thing for me, which I spent a lot of time this week uh, doing some work on, is, is the looming idea that the Fed, the Federal Reserve, could be in the crosshairs. Now, it's a, it, it's for those listeners that don't know too much about it, you know, they basically were founded in 1912 by a lot of private bankers uh, that ran the the world back then. Um, got your links to your Rothschilds and whatnot. But before then, it was a very prosperous period for America. 
And one of Trump's, Trump spoke about this in the podcast with Joe, the one of, I can't remember his name, but one of the presidents during the 1800s was called the Tariff King. He loved tariffs. And, and during that period, pre and post civil war in the US was extremely economically prosperous. They're in a surplus for most of the years. Uh, and a lot of the revenue is driven by tariffs. Now, of course, we live in a global economy now. Things have changed. Uh, you can't completely rely solely on tariffs. Tar- he was running tariffs last time. There would need to be some clever economic reforms within corporate taxes and other taxes to pull pull something like this off. But and by what I'm saying, what, what I'm leading towards it by what he could pull off is zero income tax, baby. So... This this has been done before. It was there was no income tax in the eighteen hundreds pre this pre the Fed, uh, and as we know, it's just a it's a corrupt machine that just prints money and props up fake value essentially. And their debt is a testament to that, and it is it's a ticking time bomb. Now, I know for Trumpy who wants to leave the best legacy possible in this four years. He's going to have to do something. I, I just don't think a surplus is going to cut it. Like, imagine, all right, yeah, sweet, I was the first president to get a little surplus since Bill mm. Clinton in 2001. I don't think that's really legacy-making material. The only way you can dismantle the Fed, because they operate outside the law, you can't just go in and sack Jerome Powell, the head of the Fed, and start to gut it. You can't do that. Um They are effectively lawless. The only way you can get rid of them is if the Congress, the House unanimously vote that it's no longer needed. It's no longer required to drive fiscal policy in the States. Now, this is a huge idea and it hasn't been, like there's been no concrete things laid out, but he's toyed with the idea of zero income tax. The Alex Joneses, a few others have really been diving into the the prospect of what would look what would it look like if the Fed was gone. To me, that could that honestly, that would usher in. You talk about golden age. You talk about you know rocket launching lower socioeconomic people into the middle class and getting the middle class to prosper again. If you pull something like that off, you're looking at a very different world because the the, the rest of the Western world will eventually have to fold and follow, not with zero income, but that the fiscal policy would have to change if the successes of America drastically change. Um, and then, of course, the debt problem is a big one, but you'll have to stay tuned for my solution to the $36 trillion <laughs> of debt in part three of End the Fed, which is coming out later this week. But they're the things I'm most excited about, big fella. Of course, war, getting getting rid of war and, um, yeah, destroying the censorship industrial complex is massive free speech, but also just I would love to see some drastic economic reforms that could actually cut through and see – these less fortunate people um, prosper. 